Today Mickey brings part 4 in the story of Joseph. In today's story Potiphar's wife is really turning up the heat on Joseph. What a test of his faith in God. Thanks for checking in with us here at Sword Box Ministries, for our Thursday devotional. Well, when we left off Joseph yesterday, he was being bombarded with temptation. His master's wife was attempting to seduce him day by day. But Joseph wouldn't give in, and his faith and commitment to God were real. But we know that the devil doesn't play fair, and his desire is to destroy us. Up till now, his master's wife had been speaking to Joseph, asking him to consent. But that wasn't working, so she took it to the next level. Genesis 39, 11 through 12 says, But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside, that she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. Once again, Joseph responded the right way. The woman has now grabbed him. I mean, who could blame him for giving in now? I mean, it's not like he went looking for it. After all, he said no many times, and most men would have given in a long time ago. God would understand if I just have sex this once, or maybe if we just kiss or hold hands. Then that will be enough, and we can stop there. He could have made plenty of excuses, but he didn't. He fled. He ran outside of the house where he knew she wouldn't follow. You know, 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, Flee sexual immorality. Most of us won't have to literally run away from it like Joseph did, but if that's what it takes, then run. Certainly we should avoid any situation that will put us in a vulnerable place of temptation. We must set boundaries so that we won't give in in a moment of passion or opportunity. But if we do find ourselves in such a place, we can be like Joseph and we can run. The world says run to sex. The world says if it feels good, do it. I have needs. I'm only human. But unless you're married, we are to stay away from sex. And if married, only sex with our spouse. Proverbs 14, 16 says, A wise man fears and departs from evil. Sex outside of marriage may look good and it may feel good, but it is evil in the sight of God. So now Joseph has run out of the house, leaving his garment in her hands. And now Potiphar's wife probably feels humiliated, which would then quickly turn to anger. How could this lowly slave refuse me? And how could she get her self-respect back and punish Joseph for rejecting her? Well, it didn't take her long to come up with something. Genesis thirty-nine thirteen says, And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. What an unbelievable wicked scheme. First, she calls the men of the house, and second, she blames her husband ever bringing Joseph there. Thirdly, she shows her racism and a haughty spirit by focusing on the fact that he's a Hebrew, and then fourthly, she lies about being in need and crying for help. What she had been doing, trying to lure Joseph to have an affair with her, and finally grabbing him was evil enough. But now, having been refused, and possibly being exposed for what she had done, she went on the attack, not only to cover up what she did, but also to punish Joseph for what he wouldn't do. Verse 15 says, And it happened when he, when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. So she's caused major drama in the home to convince everyone that Joseph tried to force himself on her and is keeping the evidence of Joseph's garment to show her husband when he returns home. And of course, when his, her husband came home, she told the story to him, and of course, he believed her. She had lied and was bearing false witness against Joseph, and there was nothing he could do. He was a slave, a piece of property, and once again, Joseph was going to suffer, but had done nothing wrong. In fact, he had shown excellent character, character and integrity. In Psalm 37, 12 through 14, it says, The wicked plots against the judge, just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay those who have upright conduct. So it shouldn't be a surprise when we're doing what's right that we're going to come under attack. And you know, just because, well, I'm sorry, and because of the plot of Potiphar's wife, Joseph would again, like I said, have to suffer. But remember that even though it may seem like she gets away with it, we must trust in God. 
Proverbs 19.5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. But just because we be, obey God and we do the right things, we serve Him, we submit to Him, doesn't mean we won't suffer. Just ask Joseph. We cannot control everything that happens to us, and we cannot understand everything that's going on in our lives all the time. How can we endure when bad things happen to us, when things make no sense to us? Well, Proverbs 20.24 20, says, A man's steps are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? But that may not be much comfort to you. So try Psalm 23, 37, 23, and 24. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. You may have fallen, you may have been knocked down, but no one can knock you out of God's hand. And he will uphold you, even in the worst of circumstances. You just need to trust him. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow.